Okay, next we'll take a look at another kind of groundwater problem. Whereas the first problem we talked about relates to the amount of water available, the water quantity, here we're going to talk about water quality. Is the water safe to drink? Is it safe to use as irrigation water, basically spreading it on our food? Uh, it doesn't help to have a bunch of water if it's contaminated. So water quality and water quantity are very closely related and important topics. Okay, groundwater contamination can occur naturally. Um, arsenic contamination in groundwater, for example, is very widespread. It uh, affects millions of people around the world and um, oftentimes, or in most cases, the most widespread examples of that, uh, that's natural arsenic contamination. Okay, it occurs naturally. There are many cases, however, where our activities uh, cause groundwater contamination. Man-made products such as gasoline, oil, road salts, and other chemicals can uh, migrate through soils and ultimately find their way into groundwater causing it to become unsafe and unfit for human use. Many of these uh, human sources of contamination are illustrated on this image from the uh, Groundwater Foundation. Potential sources of groundwater contamination can include storage tanks that are used for uh, storage of gasoline, oil, chemicals, or other types of liquids. They can be either above ground or below ground. There are estimated to be over 10 million storage tanks buried in the United States. Over time, these tanks can, uh, can leak and contaminate groundwater. Septic systems are wastewater disposal systems that are not connected to city sewer systems. They are designed to slowly drain away human waste underground at a slow rate, but uh, if they're not designed correctly or if something goes wrong, uh, they can contaminate groundwater by leaking pathogenic bacteria, household chemicals, or other contaminants. Uh, abandoned or uncontrolled hazardous waste dumps uh, exist in many places. There's estimated to be at least 20,000 in the United States. They can cause uh, contamination if the containers that are used to um, hold that hazardous waste develop leaks. Uh, landfills are places where our garbage is taken to be buried. Uh, landfills are supposed to have, nowadays they're supposed to have a protective liner that prevents any contaminants from getting out. However, that liner could become damaged or some of the older landfills don't have liners at all. And um, uh, leachate from these landfills can, can make its way uh, into the subsurface and contaminate groundwater. There are many cases of that. Uh, even the chemicals that we put on our lawns and fields and, and uh, roads, road salt, um, can make its way into aquifers and degrade water quality. So these are just a few examples, but uh, clearly illustrates that there are a lot of threats to our groundwater resources. They come in many forms from many sources. Now we could talk on and on about groundwater contamination all day, but for the rest of uh, this video, we'll just focus on one example. And it's uh, an example that you may have heard of already, chromium contamination. Chromium is a metal that has a lot of industrial uses, including electroplating, electroplating making alloys, tanning, wood preservative, it's used as an anti-corrosive agent in water. If it is in your water, uh, it's bad news because it can cause stomach and lung cancer, possibly a few other adverse health effects. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency requires that municipal water supplies provide water that has no more than 100 micrograms per liter. Okay, so that's 100 parts per billion. And uh, that's a fairly small concentration. The state of California takes it a little bit further. They set their maximum contaminant level, MCL, at 50 micrograms per liter. They're basically saying that anything higher than that, and they don't think it's safe to drink the water. Okay, these levels, by the way, are based on uh, scientific data. Scientists have examined the impacts of drinking contaminated water. Um, they do this in uh, a few different ways. It could include looking at um, 
on the uh, large data data sets associated with large populations that have been exposed to elevated levels of, for example, chromium in their water could include um, uh, studies that have examined the effects of contaminated water on lab animals, things like that. So these numbers are not arbitrary. They're set based upon um, uh, the results of scientific studies. Well, one of the more uh, famous cases of uh, chromium contamination in groundwater is at the Hinkley site in California. Uh, you may have seen the movie Aaron Brockovich. So this site um, is obviously pretty well known because of that movie. Um, at the site, a company used hexavalent chromium, that's also known as chromium-6, uh, from 1952 to 1966 as an anti-corrosion agent in some cooling tower water. Okay. Once they were done with the water, they discharged it into some unlined ponds, okay, where it was able to then percolate through the Vado zone and into um, an aquifer. As a result, contamination levels as high as 5,000 micrograms per liter were measured. Okay, so that is 100 times the limit set by the state of California, 5,000 micrograms per liter. Because the aquifer was used as a source of drinking water, people got sick, um, and uh, you know, pretty silly mistake, very careless. Today, the plume of contaminated water is reportedly six miles long. And so, since the 1950s, the contamination has spread out a lot, and it will be extremely costly and difficult to clean up. Okay, so that illustrates you know a very important point when it uh, comes to natural or I'm sorry human causes of, of water contamination you know water groundwater resources are expected to become increasingly important over time as human populations and demand for water increases so it's very important that we protect them and uh, if we would just listen to woody owl you know, don't give a hoot and pollute, don't pollute, <laughs> don't give a hoot, oh, dang, I did it again, give a hoot, don't pollute. If we would just listen to that advice, we'd be a lot better off. And the reason is preventing, the cost of preventing contamination is far less than the price of cleaning it up, okay? That's almost always true, and it's especially true with groundwater, because once you create a problem in the subsurface, it's very, very difficult to clean up. Okay, so this was just a small taste of, of groundwater contamination. Um, very important topic. I hope you learned a lot about this uh, issue as well as other groundwater issues from this uh, set of videos. And I thank you for watching.